Now, chapter seven deals with human rights, and it's about human rights over the whole globe. We know that we have some rights in America, but we don't always think about what are the rights of every human being on this planet. So there are some different sections of human rights that you can particularly focus on. Again, if it's in your paper, this will be important. Civil liberties, civil rights, human rights, and universal declaration of human rights. That's going to be the important one here because that deals with the whole planet, the globe, as you would say, and it began in 1948, and it was in response to the Holocaust of World War II, where over 6 million Jews, gay people, uh, out, uh, gypsies uh, were, were uh, killed, and uh, there was a, a big push for the UN to come up with a Declaration of Human Rights. So that's what this is basically about. And you can read these. This is another one. This is all in your chapter, so you can focus on that. And again, all of these PowerPoint uh, slides are available on Brightspace. In fact, all of them. I've just uh, taken out a few that I find that you should focus on. So in the Declaration of Human Rights by the, uh, the UN, these are the uh, basic ones. And uh, you can just focus life, liberty, security of person freedom of opinion and expression, um, innocent until proven guilty, just and favorable remuneration, I can't even spell it, remuneration, remuneration, I don't know you're laughing at me now or else you just fast forwarded, and uh, to form and to join a trade union, and others are to, be, to, uh, to seek and enjoy asylum from prosecution, to education, the international order. So you can read these and see if it affects your particular paper. Now, the evolution of rights, this began uh, when um, people started writing. Mostly white guys in Europe started thinking about nat natural law. If you look at the works of uh, Hume and Locke, and they also uh, influenced the Declaration of Independence. And, uh, the, and we had slavery even after we had the Declaration of Independence intergenerational rights. The, this is what the, we really think about in terms of the our responsibility to this world and to this globe is to for the rights of the future generations. You'll hear a lot about that as you continue working on this paper. This has been something a little bit newer, the sexual orientation and gender identity and their rights, and even newer, the DNA rights, the rights to privacy of your own DNA. Um, that's kind of very questionable as to how well we can secure that right. That may be something you want to talk about. For instance, comparing public opinion on homosexuality, you can see how the highest is in Spain, Germany, Canada, and we're about here, so 60%. This is a, a view, a, a positive view of homosexuality. And then you get to Pakistan and Nigeria, and it's very low. So it tells you that even though it's a universal right, it's not always accepted in different countries. So there have been some international human rights agreement, and this, again, is figure 7-2 in your book. But I wanted to point out something that 1989 was the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and there's an asterisk there. And the asterisk says, only two countries have failed to ratify this treaty. So I'm going to say it again, Convention on the Rights of the Child. And the two countries are Somalia and the United States. And in the case of the United States, it's been blocked at several key treaties and other areas of endeavor due to the opposition from conservative Republican senators concern about questions of national sovereignty. Now, this is why globalization can be very controversial. It means that our country, particularly the United States, doesn't have sovereignty over everything, over our own country or over our own people. So there's a question of, should we be kowtowing to the globe or should we be our own country? That came out with, especially in the last administration, when we got out of a lot of treaties, including the Paris Agreement on climate change. So... That, that's something I wanted to bring up because the globalization can be controversial. So the summary that's important from this chapter is human rights are universal. And it started with the Declaration of Human Rights. That should be 1948. That's, an, that's a problem with this slide. I didn't make the slide. 
Um, <clears throat> many countries continue to impinge upon the rights of the citizens. You can see that in the videos I, I recommended, and you can read this on your own. So democracy is no guarantee. We have a democratic country here, and India is the largest democracy, and they are also uh, uh, called to action from uh, the Amnesty International, for instance, on the way they treat their people. So just because it's a democracy doesn't mean it's automatically a place that's safe for everybody. So that's Chapter 7. And in the next section of this, uh, this video, I will go to Chapter 8. Okay, Chapter 8 is about the economy. And it's to give you a basic understanding of how globalization and the economy are related. And again, this may be something that will be a particularly of importance to your paper. I know that some of you have mentioned about the economy in other countries, such as the Philippines. Um, and uh, that may be something that you want to read this chapter very carefully. So check it out. But these are the important things that I feel are necessary for everyone. So just now to understand what that the terms are economics, you, you probably have a good understanding of that, but there's the GDP, the gross domestic product. That's an interesting concept that we use a lot to measure the, the size of the economies. So it means all the goods, all the services produced within a country in a given year. So we usually want to think about GDP as continually, continually growing throughout every year. So uh, I just saw an article where the economy in Britain has declined last year, and it was the biggest decline, I think 9% since the 1700s, almost three, over 300 years ago. So it's the second largest since th uh, the 1700s. So that tells you that uh, what effects that will be on um, the globalization. And then now that the economy is connected throughout the globe, when a major country such as Great Britain or the United States or the uh, European Union have a bad year, it affects almost the entire world. And that includes China too, because China is a member of this global e economy as well. So the different types of global economies is capitalism, which is what we believe in in this country. Socialism, and it's, again, that's controversial, but when you think about it, socialism, it means that um, it's a philosophy based on redistributing economic and opportunity and wealth. And so the government is involved. People may say they don't want a socialist country. Well, we have social security. And we have, uh, just think about it. When you pay taxes and the fire uh, department will take care of, of putting out fires, that's socialism right there. I don't need the fire department every day, but it's there if I need it. So that's a sense of, global, of, of socialism. So that's a controversial issue, especially in terms of health care. So that may be something that you want to talk about in your paper. Um, the size, structure, freedom, and equality are all parts of economic activity. So you don't have to be an economics major to understand this. Um, you may have an understanding if you're an LOS major, but uh, this is only for your paper. The, this is kind of interesting. So Table 8.1, the five biggest gross domestic product countries are $18.6 trillion. So when we talk about the $1.9 trillion plan to, for the economy and to uh, get rid of COVID, um, that's just a small part of the gross domestic product. And this is as of 2018. So that's uh, two years ago in terms of the data that we have. And so you can see that China is still behind us at 11.2. United Kingdom is 2.6. So these are the big five right here. The smallest five, uh, Palau, Marshall Islands, Kiribati, Nauru, and Tuv Tuvalu, which are small countries in the uh, Pacific uh, Ocean area, uh, down in the Southern Pacific Ocean. So you can see $34 million in gross domestic product. We have athletes that make more money per year uh, than tu Tuvalu. So that may be something you want to talk about. Um, these are the most productive and the least productive economies per capita. So that means per person. So in Luxembourg, the per capita GDP is $103,000. And you can see there, European and basically Northern European countries here that have the most productive GDP, the least productive are African countries. 
So when we talk about equality, which was the chapter previous to this, chapter 7, um, it's kind of difficult to make a case that the, the countries that are working on equality when each person is with about $290 compared to $103,000. And you notice the big ones like the United States, China, Japan, and, uh, uh, and uh, Italy, are not, or Great Britain, are not there either. So the share of the global de uh, gross domestic product, China is 18%, the rest, uh, the India is 7%. The group of seven, which includes some of the countries I just mentioned, such as the United States, Canada, Great Britain, Italy, France, Germany, uh, and uh, but then we have the uh, rest of the world, 43%. Okay, that should be something that you might make it, uh, a, a note of. The changing global economic landscape, um, it's been improving. The, the improvement uh, every year, it's just that some countries do better than others at a quicker pace. Global financial crisis. In 2007, at the end of the Bush administration, there was a financial uh, deregulation speculation in the United States. And that, because we're all connected, it spread quickly to Europe. So when there's a global, when there's a financial crisis in a major country, it can cause a global financial crisis. But I want to show you that this is the world GDP, the solid line. And from 1960, okay, this is in trillions of dollars, okay, so trillions of dollars here. So we have very, just a bit, about one to two trillion dollars in the GDP for the world. And it's, a, it's about 75 trillion dollars in 2000, the last year that they were able to get in, in 2015 or so. The China GDP has gone up quite a lot since 2000. And America has been almost a straight line. So it's gone up consistently to about, well, we said $19 trillion. And the world population is this line over here, the dotted line. And the dotted line, that's, that's grown so to where we're about seven, over, a little over 7 million people, uh, 7 billion people in the world. Okay. So actually it's a 70 million, so that's about 7 billion people in the world. I don't think they have their population in millions. That should be 7 billion. Again, another graph problem in the PowerPoint. So wealth, again, this is something that may interest you for your paper. You can read this on your own. But this shows the regional levels of economic productivity in North America, which includes Mexico, United States, and Canada. And you can see the per capita GDP in, in, uh, US, in US dollars. So this is about fifty-five or fifty-six thousand dollars, and then Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia. You can see how small. So when we talk about equality, chapter seven, and then wealth in chapter eight, you can see there's a diversity. The whole world as a, the world as a whole, right here, is about ten thousand dollars. So you decide. Now this is another interesting comparing wealth and income. So wealth. Is the share the share of wealth is up here for the United States, and the share of income goes down. So that tells you that there this is the percentage of the wealth in America, and this is the percentage of the income in America. And you can see that in Greece it's smaller, but the ratio is not as 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 uh, different as the United States. So what happens? Poverty. We know what that it deals with. And is a resource uh, a resource curse. Uh, the value of a single profitable resource can create economic problems for a country, and that can include water, that can include food, that can include clothing. So something that may be something that that will uh, give you a pause when you're writing your paper. Again, these are some of the other things of poverty and its effects. So I find these are the slides that are important for your paper. So the summary, I'm not going to read it all up to you, but this is a summary of the chapter that's important. And I would suggest that, again, if your area is into the globalization in terms of economy, this chapter is important for you. If not, you can skim over it. It's up to you. Um, again, it's your paper. So one last time, as we go on to the syllabus itself, the week of February 15th, 2021, you read the chapters, seven and eight. We're over halfway done the book. Again, we're just top loading the book. These are the videos. You can find them on, uh, on YouTube. 
and uh, the five, the assignment for this week are the five books, articles, scholarly resources. Again, it has to be scholarly resources. That's important, right there. Scholarly resources. And give me an article from Teen Magazine. Okay. And coming up, and uh, I'm sorry, the uh, this is all due February nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and your response February fourth, twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. And that is basically it. So again, I'm going to go to this first slide. Talk to me. Have a good week. Take care. And it's a long weekend for some of you. Enjoy it.